Isaiah 1, 18 tells you, reason, saith the Lord. Yeah? Reason things out. I'm using the biblical quotation here. Yeah? Now, the Muslim is told, reason. The Muslim has, to, has been told to go further. Prove things. Okay? Thessalonians in the book of the, in the Bible tells you the same thing. Prove all things. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, these people who have embraced Islam, who have come to Islam, mm -hmm. yeah? You cannot accuse them of being blind to what is true. They had to have eyes open, whatever that means. Before they fully understood it, they accepted it. No, no Muslim who has become a Muslim after 1953 can claim, nor can the ones before, can claim that a sword was put to their head and they were forced to embrace Islam. Yeah? Here we have got, I think, the, the rate is uh, five plus every week in Great Britain are embracing Islam. But the central question that we started off with is your analogy that if there is gold, okay, and there's somebody coming and telling you, look, there's more that side, okay? A reasonable person, if he was looking for the gold, is going to go there. No doubt about it. If his motive is something else, that's a separate issue. <clears throat> Isn't that what we are agreeing on? Yes, but we are getting into some areas that I would have some caution on. Uh, you may notice that it's a fairly rare circumstance for us to be meeting uh, with Muslims. Why? Because of considerable concern about our bringing uh, the knowledge of the gold in our pile to the Muslims at this time. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, our leadership has said, um, if they come to you and they want to, want to study, that's one thing. But don't go knocking on their doors and, 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 and uh, tell them that you'd like to talk to them. So if we knock on a door and there's a Muslim family there, we say to them, uh, we hope you have a good day, uh, greet you, uh, greeting, mm. uh, and we go on our way. Right. Uh, we do not uh, uh, at this time share. Right. Uh, and there, there are complex reasons. Some of them we got into the other day that are political. Mm that there is concern about what would happen mm. to uh, some of the people we brought in. Now, there are Muslims who are members of the church. Uh, we have uh, mm. the temple down here, and there's some former uh, Muslims who are, are Mormons, and they're right. temple marries. But they are there because they asked to be, yes. not because of we knocked course. on the door and invited them. Absolutely. And uh, it's a difficult thing for us to share that with right. you. I'm so, going to sound unreasonable here, all right, I go think. Ahead. Go ahead. But can you show me a verse where it tells you your elders should tell you that? Where what? Where your elders would tell you not to share this at this moment in time with the Muslims. Nothing written. Strictly verbal. So there is no instruction from God telling you this? Oh, no. No, no. No, no. It's, uh, and, and the day will come, I'm sure. But uh, I was talking with one of our brothers this morning hmm. that um, you eat an elephant at a bite at a time. But you want to make sure the meat doesn't spoil once you shoot the elephant. Mm. Uh, for many years, we did not preach to, uh, to the black people. We did not go to Africa. What was the reason? Uh, the reason that was given at that time mm. uh, was one rationalization after another. What does that mean, sorry? They were making excuses. And what was the excuse? There were a variety of them. It wasn't anything to do with the black man being cursed, was it? Yes, at times that was was mentioned. Was it from God? But there were times that quotations from the scriptures uh, from God were brought up. That maybe this was the curse of Cain, maybe that was the reason why. But the reason was not clarified. Uh, about, within my lifetime, President Kimball had a revelation that we should go to Africa. And it was a tough situation went to Africa, it has been uh, uh, something that we can now handle, we're able to deal with it. But had that happened a hundred years ago, uh, we couldn't have dealt with Africa. So when Joseph Smith was receiving revelation, did the revelation tell him that the black people were cursed? Uh, the revelation, or the scriptures that we had were that Cain had a mark placed on him. And it was assumed that Cain uh, 
uh, and the black people were the same by people who were in the church. We don't know that. We have no revelation yeah. saying that that is actually true. Excuse me for misunderstanding. What I am asking you is, I don't want to know what you are believing right now. Yeah. I want the explanation first of Joseph Smith. When he was proclaimed, you know, the one who was going to be given the scripture by Moroni, yes. okay, was he given a scripture which told him that the black people were cursed? He received revelations from God to that effect, that the, there was, would be a restriction on the preaching of the gospel. Would you be able to show me that verse, please, uh, since you brought it up? Whether, I don't think that's contained in Doctrine and Covenants as such, is it? No, is it in the Book of Mormons? No, it's not in the... Well, there are, there are curses given in the Book of Mormon, too. The doctrinal foundation is there in the Scriptures, but it would basically... We, it would take mm. a while to go through every instance, which basically, as you'd be looking for a line which says this is the deal, yes, that, that was received um, by revelation after these revelations have been given. The thing about the church is that yes. we are re constantly receiving revelation from God. That's what sets us up right, I understand. predominantly from yeah. other Christian churches. So, so do you know the revelation you're receiving? Mm -hmm. Will, can that actually overrule the Book of Mormon? It could. I'll give you an example. Can yes, um, in the Book of Mormon. There was a time when people were uh, practicing polygamy, right. many wives, uh -huh. and they were doing it without God's sanction, yes. and they were chastised for it. Hmm. Then in Joseph Smith's time, uh, in the 1840s, uh, <coughs> polygamy was again practiced. Sorry, brother, when you are saying then in Joseph Smith's time, are you saying prior to Joseph Smith, there was the Church of the Mormons? No. So I'm who was practicing polygamy? Book of Mormon times. No, that was the revelation that came to him. In the Book of Mormon, the people described in the Book of Mormon, hmm. those people were practicing polygamy. Okay. The story, the Book of Mormon in this context is much like the Old Testament. It is historical. Right. It covers a thousand okay. years. During that period of time, there was a period of time when they were practicing polygamy, hmm. and they were severely chastised. Okay. They were told they were breaking the hearts of their, their wives. Fine. Then there was a period of time when the Church was, uh, of uh, Jesus Christ was organized and there was no polygamy. Then polygamy was uh, practiced among the Mormons with God's sanction. That continued up to 1890 when they were told no more polygamy. Mm. So polygamy as a practice mm. has been on again, off again, on again. Abraham mm. practiced polygamy. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, yes, no. It goes back and forth. But the purposes of why it is practiced have mm. to be God's purposes that cannot be uh, uh, man's. Right. So when Joseph Smith was given the task of translating the plates, he was told polygamy was okay. Yes. At one, well, after that. It was after the that. plates were in 1830. So, it was sometime after. Right. So are you telling me, correct me if I'm wrong here, are you telling me that each subsequent prophet can actually supersede Joseph Smith? They could. Yeah. When you said they could, no one has so far. Things of, uh, one thing, uh, Joseph Smith actually ordained a couple of black men that were baptized to the priesthood. Hmm. And after that happened, then the injunction against black men having the priesthood. So in Joseph Smith's own lifetime, uh, he was told, you did it, don't do that anymore. Hmm. Then, in President Kimball's time, hmm. go baptize the black people. Yeah. At the present time, uh, in this area, mm. we do not go out actively seeking Muslim converts. Mm. No, that's fine. But I'm just going on what you said. You see, my assumption is, it might, it might sound illogical. I don't think so. If the curse turned them into black people, what were they before? Well, the assumption is that... Uh, uh, Adam and Eve were both of the same color, whatever it was. No, I'm not talking about Adam and Eve, I'm talking about these black people who had been cursed. What were they before? You see, I'm referring it back to the American Indians. Yes? Yeah. The American Indians, according to the uh, Latter-day Saints, are considered or were considered, yeah? yeah, people who are cursed. Black people are cursed. What I'm asking you is, according to your church, what were they before? What color of skin were they? Well, I suspect before uh, they were uh, cursed or a mark was put on them, yes. they, the mark was not there, whatever it was. Well, what do you I think don't even was? know that the mark was blackness. So what do you think it, it just was? says a mark. It doesn't say necessarily blackness. That I Actually, it does say black. In the Old Testament? No, in the Book of Mormon. <coughs> 